The Missing tells the story of J.J. McField as she searches for her close friend Emily, who has disappeared during a camping trip on the Isle of Memories. Or is it? There's quite a bit more going on in this story, so from here on out I'll be dealing exclusively in extreme spoilers. All of the following information can be gleaned by playing the game to the end and reading every instant message, but if you can't get past the clock tower or find yourself nodding off at the sheer volume of text, well that's why I'm here. Let's start at the beginning. Jackie Jameson McField grows up in a fairly religious household and is an only child. JJ's best friend is Emily. While born male, Jackie feels out of step with society's expectations for that gender, and realizes that she is a trans woman, a truth about herself that she feels the need to hide. Eventually, she confides in Emily, who is incredibly supportive and loves her unconditionally. Jackie runs into trouble when she goes to university, though. Because she's going to a new city and will be encountering entirely new people, she makes the decision to break cleanly with her old life and arrives at the university as JJ, a female freshman. At first, this goes pretty well. She meets a new circle of friends who accept her as she is, and does well in her school projects. Then things back home become problematic. Her mother goes through her room and finds JJ's female wardrobe, as well as her diary. Her mother is shattered by the revelation, not just because she's been taught that transsexuals are deviant by the church, but because her first instinct is that this means she'll never have a grandchild. JJ is an only child and her father is dead, so her mother has placed all of her hopes for the continuance of the family line on JJ. This leads her to pressure JJ into psychological and religious counseling, explaining that JJ can be cured and normal if she just works hard enough. Despite Emily's insistences that there's nothing about her that needs fixing, JJ still wants to keep from hurting her mother, and even considers going into therapy in an attempt to change herself. Then things take a dark turn when some other students at the university discover that JJ is a trans woman, and put together a fake online profile to bully and shame her. Seeing the new life she'd built for herself crashing down around her, JJ falls into despair and decides to publicly commit suicide. She grabs her favorite stuffed animal, leaves her wig in her dorm room, and goes to a lecture hall to slash her wrists. As she lies on the ground, bleeding to death, her mind wanders into a dissociated state, and it's here that the vast majority of the game takes place, with pieces of her subconscious broken down and reassembled into environments and threats. The camping trip that starts the game is something that the couple plan to take as a celebration of JJ's upcoming 20th birthday, and almost immediately that idyllic space is corrupted, first by pollution, representing the way her new life has been poisoned, and then her imminent death is represented by a graveyard, one that contains a puzzle themed around a person who was built wrong and has to be repaired, which is the exact thought that her mother placed within her head. Her mother is also represented in the church, which is filled with owls, suggesting that a religious authority is always looming over her, watching her every action, and ready to tear her apart if she steps out of line. Other locations also seem to be drawn rather obviously from her subconscious. The lumberyard and construction sites are both based on building something new, and because JJ thinks that's no longer possible, they're now filled with death traps, mocking her for thinking that she could build a new life for herself. Her mother turns up again in the train sequence. The very first conversation we see between JJ and her mother is an extended series of messages laying out mom's career plans for JJ, who is currently just a sophomore in university. JJ feels that her mother is railroading her down a specific path, and it's not accidental that this sequence ends with JJ being crushed by the literal manifestation of her mother's life plan. Then, in one of the most obvious uses of symbolism in the game, a literal bridge between Emily and JJ collapses as she tries to cross it. The most important location is, of course, the Clock Tower, which is both the most emotionally resonant and most difficult section of the game. Because this was the site of JJ's confession to Emily, she views it as the location where her life took a turn down a path that has eventually led her to self-destruction. Some of the key themes underpinning her mental anguish are revealed here as well. Earlier in the game, players might have been baffled by the inclusion of razor-armed baby dolls, but this line of dialogue cuts right into the threat posed by JJ's mother's demands, as JJ is forced to grapple with the question of whether her life really is her own. Does she exist only to move a set of genes another generation down the line of history, or is she a person with her own wants, needs, and desires? The Emily that JJ spends the game searching for represents the feminine identity that JJ desires, because the real Emily is so accepting of JJ's identity, now that JJ feels her life is over, that acceptance is fleeing from her, always just out of reach. All of the trials she encounters are her fears and doubts manifesting, telling her that she'll never be the person that Emily already believes her to be. Which is why Emily must be destroyed within the dream, because JJ's certainty that she can never live a life that she desires necessitates the destruction of the Emily that represents everything she aspires towards. 
Which brings me to the game's two villains. First, there's the golem of severed limbs that threatens Emily just before the game's climax. An inventive depiction of the despair that has driven JJ to suicide, it's made up of her severed limbs and built around an absolute void, representing the nothingness that JJ has decided to cast herself into. In the fight, she must completely eradicate the final traces of Emily before she can completely let go of the world and embrace oblivion. Of course, in the end, JJ can't completely wipe herself out and is forced to have a final showdown with the Hair Shrieker, a beast that represents JJ fear that she'll never be accepted as a woman. At first, it seems like an abstract creation with baffling gray coloration. Later, we discovered that the creature is based on the photoshopped images on the cruel mocking website that her bullies had constructed. The Hair Shrieker emerges straight out of the darkest recesses of JJ's self-loathing, a force telling her that she'll never be the woman she wants to be. So really, it's best to just give up now. Which is why she wields a supersized version of the very box cutter that JJ used to attempt suicide before the game began. Once the game is finished, there's some fascinating post-game content to look at. Not only is it a wonderful emotional cooldown to read some post-healing text messages between JJ and the actual Emily, but players now have access to this character model, the Jackie Jameson who attempted to kill herself. This model isn't just a fun extra, however. It offers a clear message to the player. Even without the wig, JJ still moves and acts like herself. This is a JJ who has fully accepted who she is, and irrespective of how she looks at any given moment, she's still JJ McField, a young woman with a bright future ahead of her. So that's the Hogaru breakdown of the missing story. I'm sure there's plenty more that can be discussed in the game. There's probably a whole video's worth of content in the way each of the characters in JJ's text chains give us a look at different sides of her personality, like her idolization of Abby's ability to seamlessly adopt a new persona, or her obliviousness to Lily's crush, or the way the game's themes factor into puzzle design, such as the aforementioned body rebuilding puzzle, or the way the bowling alley puzzle is built around the player's gradual realization that just because a person appears to be one thing doesn't mean that they don't also have a secret, true identity. In any event, it's a fantastic game that's obviously worth putting this kind of attention and analysis into, and I can't wait to see what kind of theories get built up around it. Especially the symbol monkeys. I have no idea what's going on with them. Thanks for watching, I'll see you back here for more, but until then, au revoir.